Number one wants you to estimate and then actually solve. So if I were to estimate, I would say that 93 goes into about 9,852, about 100 times. Because if I rounded this to, we'll say, 93,000 divided by 93, if I ignore those zeros, 93 goes into 93 one time, add those zeros back, it would be 100. Now it wants you to actually solve. So 93 goes into 98 one time. 1 times 93 is 93. Subtract 5. Bring down 5. 93 goes into 55 zero times, so you have to do that zero. So then we bring down the 2. 93 goes into 552 about 5 times. Then we have to do 93 times 5. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 9 is 45 plus 1 is 46. So 465. Subtract. 2 minus 5 we can't do, so we have to borrow. 12 minus 5 is 7. 4 minus 6 we can't do, so we have to borrow. 14 minus 6 is 8. So our answer is 105, remainder 87. Number 2 says circle the number that shows each decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. So if we look at our first one, we have our 8 in our hundredths place. We look to the right, it's a 5, so we round up. So our 8 is now going to be a 9, so the second one is correct. For 5 and 4 thousandths, we look at the 0 in our hundredths place. We look to the right, since it's a 4, we round down, so we would round down to 0. 23 and 72 thousandths, the 7 is in our hundredths place, so we look to the right, it's a 2, we round down. The first one would be correct. Number three says using only the digits six, nine, and one, what is the largest decimal less than one you could write? So since we know it's less than one, we're going to have a zero in our ones place. So then we have our decimal point. We want to use our biggest number in our tenths place, which would be a nine. Then we want to use our next biggest number, and then our next. So our answer would be nine hundred sixty-one thousandths. Now it says using only the digits 6, 9, and 1, what's the smallest number you could write? So again, we want a 0 and then a decimal point. And now we want to do the opposite. We want our smallest and then our next smallest and then our next smallest. So 0 and 169 thousandths. Then it says what is the value of the 6 in each number? For each of them, it is 6 hundredths. So you could write it like that, or you could write it in words if you would like. Number four says, Gwen is seven-eighths of the way through a race. She saw her family cheering when she was at two-thirds of the way done. How much of the race has Gwen run since she saw her family? So she's run seven-eighths through, and she saw her family at two-thirds. So we want to subtract that from seven-eighths. So that would be our number model. Then to actually solve the problem, we have to find a common denominator because, as you know, we can't do 7 eighths minus 2 thirds since the denominators are different. So I'm going to list my multiples of 8, 8, 16, 24, 32, and now I'm going to list my multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, so as we see, 24 would be our common denominator. So 7 eighths equals something 20 fourths minus 2 thirds or something 20 fourths. To get from 8 to 24, we multiply by 3. 7 times 3 is 21. To get from 3 to 24, we multiply by 8. 2 times 8 is 16. So now we have 21 20 fourths minus 16 twenty fourths, which is 5 twenty fourths. And number 5 says Otis, or says Otis gave an estimate answer of 5 fifths for the problem 4. 
Use estimation to explain how you know his answer is incorrect. So, again, we know he's wrong because 5 fifths is equal to 1 whole. So Gwen is only 7 of the 8ths of the way done, and she saw her family cheering her at 2 thirds. So since we're subtracting, we know our answer is going to be less than 7 eighths, which is less than 1.